Good evening. My name is Concepcion, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who uh, struggled as the adult child of an alcoholic. So good evening, I Celebrate Recovery family. We're just so glad that you join us again uh, for another week. And, you know, on Thursday, we either have a teaching or a testimony. And tonight, Mike is going to um, help us again with uh, maybe some words of wisdom to continue to help us through this quarantine. We can't wait uh, to see you live and in person. And so let's just welcome Mike. <clears throat> Hello, CR. It's good to be back again on this Thursday night. So tonight, we're going to talk about the importance of maintaining our sobriety during the quarantine. And uh, let me start off by talking about me. I thrive on routine and norm normality uh, in my life. And I'm sure there may be some of you out there that may be like me. I love and find security from the routine in my life. You could say I'm a little OCD in that regards. I find a sort of structure in my repetitiveness of life. This can be good when I'm centered in my recovery routine, bad when I'm not. Good when I'm utilizing the tools in my recovery belt. When I'm leaning into my recovery and locking to my routine. I seem less prone to compromise. What I mean by that is my mind is steadily focused on God, His Word, and the principles learned through CR. Bad is when I sometimes become like Peter, when God, when God called him to come towards him. Peter got out of the boat, began to walk towards the Lord, and then noticed or changed his focus on how intense the waves were raging around him and began to sink. So when T Peter rather took his eyes off of Christ, he began to sink. And that is what happens to me uh, at times when I'm alone with my own thoughts. I'm not focused on the, on the Lord as it should be. I take my eyes off the Lord and I begin to sink. Second Timothy says, For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Another caution in maintaining sobriety when we face is when we face a crossroads. During this time of quarantine and social distancing, like I mentioned, we like Peter, can take our eyes off of Christ and we begin to look at the raging waves of isolation, boredom, depression, and we begin to sink. Psalms 32 states, I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. So whether or not we're looking to Christ, he's looking to us. We will come to those crossroads in life, even when we're not under quarantine. Those moments where the flesh may rear up, bad old tendencies may seep into our life, and we come to a fork in the road, a crossroad. It's our decision, and we have the power to make that decision, whether we go left or right, right being spiritual, left being fleshly. This is when it becomes critical for us critical for us to reach into our belts, pull out our journal, journal, and begin to chronicle events over the past few days. This will help us get a bead 
or in a discontent when it begins to creep up on you. Now, the truth be known, when we hit those crossroads, we know when we're walking towards the edge of the cliff, so to speak. There's no mistake about that. What the journaling would do is help us at least pump the brake. Give us a moment of clarity, clear thought where we can truly assess the dangerous path we're contemplating taking. Do we really want to walk over that cliff? Now, we may lie to ourselves, but we know what happens when we take that last fatal step. So journaling helps us log our thoughts. Where were we? When did that discontent first set in, creep in? Where we began to contemplate acting out, losing our sobriety. And it gives us a chance to go back and look, oh, I see, it was when, and you fill in the blank. There's something about that that strengthens us. We can have a tangible in our hand and pull out when we feel those uh, disillusion, discontent feelings that make us prone to stumble. Stay connected. Now, more than ever, is the time to stay connected. Again, isolation, discontent, discontentment, boredom, and self-pity can quickly drown us in our own despair. Remember, one of the enemy's greatest tactics is to divide and conquer. Do not let pride blind you from staying connected. Do not let the enemy whisper in your ear, well, they're busy, you don't want to bother them. I can get through this alone, which is fatal for me. We, we need to stay connected. It's spiritual to stay connected. And though we may not be able to do it physically, we can do it electronically. Reach out to your sponsor. Reach out to those you trust. Share with them the burdens on your heart. The next <clears throat> area of caution is to stand on God's word. This point goes without question. God's word is where we acquire our spiritual nurturing. We wouldn't consider not eating during this time of quarantine. But sadly, some of us believe we can omit time in God's word. In addition, here are five dangers of skipping alone time with God. Number one, <clears throat> internal clutter. God may not always do something with our external circumstances when we read his word and pray, but his word always does something to us internally. I mentioned how I love routine and at least four days of the week, my routine included going to the gym. Now, I didn't always gleefully get up, get dressed, drive to the gym. It was grudgingly many times more than should be where I had to fight to get to the parking lot, walk inside. I really, didn't want to do it. But once I got there and went through my exercise routine, I always felt better. It was always uplifting, inspiring. I felt better leaving than when I did coming in. 
So with the quarantine, I tried early, in the early days, to do isometrics, push-ups, air squats, and I just can't find the motivation. I just don't want to do it. And I think we're on maybe day 37 now, the quarantine, and it's, it's really starting to wear the exterior fabric of my soul. It really is working on my psyche. So, you know, I equate that to the internal clutter we, we accumulate if we're not in God's word. It's like me not going to the gym and then not motivated to work out at home. Bad things happen. You know, where I had muscle tone is now flat. I shouldn't say that in cyberspace, but it's just fact of life. The second danger of skipping a long time with God is lack of direction. Psalms 19.105 tells us, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word is not just a rule book. It's also a map that guides us through the twists and turns and crossroads of life. It's like I mentioned earlier, the spiritual nurturement we gain through God's word. It keeps us strong. It keeps us resolved. It keeps us firmly planted, not relying upon the flesh. Number three, it's our inability to fight temptation. Skipping a long time with God increases our inability to fight against temptation. Being part of God only encourages the enemy, or the enemy to draw closer to us. Sorry, being apart from God only encourages the enemy to draw closer to us and tempt us even more. Fighting sin becomes much easier when we're connected to God daily. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. It's imperative that we spend time in God's word every day to prevent relapse in our recovery. That's a foundation for the tools we acquire in CR. Number four, dwindling sensitivity to God. Have you ever wanted to hear from God directly but couldn't? That's because you're missing, missing time communicating with Him. Connection is constant and unimpeded communication is vital. It's a mystery to me how some of us, myself included, will neglect, misprioritize spending time in God's Word, and then have the woes me and scratch your head when bad things begin to happen. Now, bad things are going to happen regardless. It's how we respond to those bad things. And spiritual malnourishment is a sure, guaranteed way to have a slip and to relapse. When we're in God's word, no matter what the world brings, we stay encouraged, we stay focused on him. Like Peter, he was able to walk in the water as long as he kept his eyes on Christ. When we're not spending time in God's Word, we begin to sink. Number five, loss of appetite for God's treasures. Matthew 6 20 states, Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. So God's word not only nourishes us, strengthens us to overcome the flesh while we're here, but in a biblical sense, we store up treasures in heaven. I don't know exactly how that works. We'll find out one day. It'll be a blast when we do. But it's a two-pronged approach. We store up treasures in heaven while we inoculate ourselves from the enemy. God's word and presence is the ultimate source of God's heavenly treasures. When we read his word and stay connected to him, we expose ourselves to more heavenly things and thus grow in our passion. When we don't, we start desiring things this world more than things of God. And, and that's another danger that will cause us to slip into our hurts, hangups, and habits. I'm not sure if I mentioned what mine were. Uh, I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I wrestle with materialism, selfishness, and lust. Now, materialism is something I, I really had to, at this season, guard myself against. And this quarantine has been a blessing in disguise because there's nothing open. There's nowhere for me to go to satisfy that fleshly itch I have of materialism. And I believe God, I know, God's using this time to shore that area of my life up. So no matter what your hurt, hang up and habit may be, we need to stay focused on God, focus on his treasures, Remember, there's never been a time in our life that God has not been faithful to us. No matter how high the waves may rage, how violently the, the wind may, may blow, God's still in control. No matter what your circumstances is, He is still in control. And I've seen that time doesn't permit now. More than a couple of times during this quarantine, we're We've called out to the Lord. Ken Kuhnhofer, good, great example, great example of God's faithfulness. And, and I pray one day Ken will be able to stand before us and give his testimony from the inside out. In summary, I mentioned this before, but let me stress the importance again of being honest with ourselves. We are masters at manipulating our own thoughts. We can take something that is strongly commanded by God not to do and make it okay to do. We can justify it. Like I mentioned earlier, but we know when we're walking towards the edge of that cliff, we're rationalized, well, I'm gonna to stick to landing this time. I'm not gonna break up my body. I'm gonna land a different way. Well, that's all lies to justify and override the spirit telling us. No